Okay, you know when I'm patching skylights like this, I want to make sure that they're as flat as they can possibly be to the mud that's built up on the old drywall because the corner bead got ripped off and there is uh, some mud built up here. Now, yes, I could come up here, rip the corner bead off. I can scribe this back to the, to the ceiling trusses that are here, right? I can do that and then put a piece of drywall in there and do that and finish it. But if I'm using half inch and the drywall that's underneath here is half inch, it's not going to work. It's just not going to be good because this mud's sticking up farther. I'm going to be an eighth of an inch off. Maybe if this is half inch and this mud is built up here, I can use five eighths and that could be a lot closer. Or I can just make sure when I put some new wood in here to drywall to that I'm flush, a half inch flush flushes out completely nicely with the existing mud that's here. And that's what I did. I put a couple of boards across here like this. I put a piece of half inch drywall on, the, on that board. And then I put a one, two by four up there, rested it on the half inch, fastened it to the stud, and I screwed to that because that's sticking down farther. And I just screwed to that two by four. So I reframed these out to match the mud buildup on the here so this is flat this is nice and flat so i'm going to be doing some work here so i'm going to be taping these with the extra strong fiber fuse is because these skylights leaked a couple of times i've replaced them once they leaked again and i'm just tired you know i remember telling my dad one time oh yeah i put some skylights in my kitchen and um he's like because he's an old time carpenter what? You cut holes in your roof? He thought that was just insane, you know, to cut holes in your roof. I don't think I would have had problems with these skylights, but I have another roof right over here that goes up like that. And on a torrential downpour, it comes down, goes over the gutters, and really splashes on top of these skylights. And I think that's what happens on a really torrential downpour. I've gotten some leaks on these because these were really good skylights. Um, they just, it just w wasn't working well here. So in a video just prior to this, when I talked about the different types of mud, what I like to patch with this one here, I'm going to patch with five. But trust me, I'm going to do these patches as if anybody can do them. I mean anybody. I'm going to make this very, very simple. If you are a novice at this and you are not sure what you're doing, do not use this mud. Do not use it. Use an all-purpose, use a plus three, use anything other than this right now, and you can tape with that, okay? But I'm going to use this because I'm going to tape and coat this right away. So I, I'm just going to use this. And, uh, but you do not have to use this for these. These are old patches. They've been here for a long time. You're not going to have a lot of settlement here. This was taped with level line the first time. It was absolutely perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. The only reason I ripped it out, the only reason I ripped it out is because I patched these skylights. So I tore it out. That's why. And, uh, but so I'm going to redo all of this stuff with five, five minute mud. And then, uh, and I'm only going to coat it because like I said, I'm going to do this patch as if anybody can do it. I mean, anybody, if, uh, if you've never done a patch before, you can do this. You can do a patch like this. Just don't use this mud. Use, like I said, use an all-purpose. Just use an all-purpose compound. Um, it's, it's, uh, and, and again, don't use, try to use it straight out of the box. I've had so many people just, they get the pre-mixed all-purpose compound and they just try to use it straight out of the box or straight out of the bucket. It's not designed for that. It's not made for that. You gotta thin it down. Always gotta thin down 
mud out of a bucket or a box. I, I never use it straight. Now, listen, I could put paper tape on here. Not on this. If I put paper tape on here, I need more mud on there. But I can definitely use this fiber fuse. I'm pretty high up here too, guys. I'm, I'm two bakers high. So, I'm two bakers high, yeah. I smoked two bakers today. So, and what I really like about this, and the reason I said anybody can use this, is because you don't have to worry about blisters. It's not gonna blister on you like paper tape is. Um, so you can use this and not have to worry about any blisters. If, if mud didn't get in here right now, I can actually push mud into it later. So I'm gonna do this just a little quicker. Gonna mud up that. Gonna mud up this. Uh oh. <gasps> hey, we don't uh oh here. No uh oh here. All right. And let's do this. Should have gotten a little closer to this. Don't fall. I used to have an AA sponsor, used to always say, hey, Ray, Ray, we don't do that anymore. Well, don't fall, I don't wanna fall anymore. It hurts at my age. All right, that's that. I, have to, I know I only have five here. I probably should have grabbed some 20 and mixed up a lot more. That way I could have taped and coated it all in once, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get this tape on here and then I'm gonna switch to topping mud. I'm not gonna tape and coat this with five. I'm only taping this with the five minute mud, that's all. It looks like I'm gonna have to mix up a little more too. Cause I don't have enough here. Okay. So, any questions, guys? If you got any questions, if you if you really do, I I do answer questions. Uh, you can find my email address too, pretty well, pretty easy. It's in the descriptions. If you wanted to email me, you know, I'm at the drywall PhD at gmail.com. Um, so. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, there's plenty of ways to get a hold of me. I'm actually on Facebook. Um, I'm actually on Facebook at the Drywall Doctor, and I've got a, my, I've got another Facebook account too because uh, it won't let me join all of these other Facebooks without my my personal Facebook account. So I have one of those too, but it's just a little bit harder to find. But I also have an Instagram account. Instagram account that uh, I interact on a lot. So, but, but if you notice, just got mud in my face. But if you notice, I don't need much mud when I'm using fiber fuse. I, I don't, I just need enough to, to get it to stick. That's what I need. And it doesn't blister on me. That's kind of why, I think that's kind of why they made this stuff is so anybody could use it. You know, when you're using paper tape, there's no way, absolutely no way I could have taped this with paper tape with that much mud. I would have definitely had to have had mixed up another panful. I would not have been able to get through all of that right there with paper tape because I needed more mud behind the paper in order to get it to, to adhere to the wall. So, so this is a good, a good mud for, for people who aren't, or I'm sorry, this is a good tape for people who aren't used to taping. This is a great tape for that because it doesn't blister on you. And it does hold up. It holds up very well. Does it hold up as good as paper? I don't, I honestly, I, I don't know. And the reason I say that is because I've done patches like this well over 30 years ago. It, there's no problems with them. You know, and the thing is, is back then too, they didn't have this mud. I had to use the real Durabond. And I did that well over 30 years ago. And, uh, and uh, 
today I forgot my I forgot my snips and so you know what I'm gonna do guys I'm gonna tape this with paper tape I've done that plenty of times too and again without a problem 30 years ago they didn't have level line they didn't have no coat they didn't have a lot of these things that they have today well they might have I I don't know I guess 40 years ago <laughs> 40 years ago I guess I'm a lot older than I thought ain't I so I've been doing this for over 40 years. So 40 years ago, they didn't have a lot of this stuff, a lot of these products that we have today. And uh, so we had to tape these angles. We had to, we had to do the stuff with, uh, with just paper tape because that's all we had. So that's what I'm gonna do here today. I'm just gonna tape this with paper tape. And again, this is, since I'm doing paper tape, look at how much more mud I have to put on here. I mean, it's, uh, I would have had to do this with level line too, but look at how much more mud I have to put on here. And with paper tape, I tape this differently. So actually, I'm kind of glad I'm using just paper tape here now, because I'd like to show you some other things, maybe on this video. And now I need more mud. Mud, 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 mud. <laughs> just a little. I don't need as much as I have here, so I'm gonna get rid of some of this water. You know, it's, it's nice too, they, they fix this mud, this lightweight mud here, uh, easy sand, so it does, uh, it mix a lot easier, and it does mix a lot easier than it used to. Uh, it used to take quite a while to mix this stuff up, and it's not anymore. It mixes up pretty easy. Easy scaffolding, easy. Like I said, I'm two bakers high, and it's a little wobbly. I don't like to go three bakers high. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, I really will not go three bakers high unless you have the stabilizer bars in it, because they do have stabilizer wheels that kind of go out and help stabilize the the baker cart. Uh, I do have three baker carts, uh, but I, I don't really make them three high just, just because of that. I'm just gonna get rid of the rest of this paper. So put this up here, wipe it down. And also too, when I'm doing these off angles, I really wanna make sure that I can reach from one end to the other. I really want to make sure I can do that. If I can't, I figure out a way. Ladders, plate, planks, whatever I have to do to go from one end to the other. One end or the other. We're going to find you. We're going to get you, get you, get you, get you. One way or another. Okay. Oops, oops, I didn't even see that coming down behind me. Oops, hey, we don't oops here. Stop oopsing here. Okay. Whoa. Well, I cut that piece twice and it's still short. All right. This stuff's starting to sit up on me a little bit, guys. It really is. Because I keep mixing up new mud without cleaning everything up. So I don't have five minutes anymore. Not sure how long I've been doing this video, but I'm assuming it's getting close to five minutes. So, and the level line is so much easier to do. That's why they made it. So it's so much easier to do and, uh, than what I'm doing right now. And, uh, and I have to do things differently if I'm using tape too. I can't, uh, I can't do like I do it with level line. I have to uh, do things a lot differently. All right. You know what? There it is. It's taped. It's, it's all taped out right now. Oh, uh, that's pretty crooked up here, but it won't be when I'm done. And I got to get rid of this mud because this mud is, uh, 
it's setting up. So don't, don't, don't judge this book by its cover. I shouldn't have, uh, I should have used 20, not five. And I should have cleaned up in between. That way I would have had a little bit longer with this because that is, uh, that's getting pretty hard. But I'm done with what I'm gonna do with right now. I'm gonna wash this stuff up. And then I'm going to coat this in, like I said, with topping. Just with topping. Ooh, this water's warm. That's gonna set up a little quicker then, since this is warm water. So I'll be, I'll be right back. You saw me tape all of this with some Durban 5. Now I'm gonna coat it right away. I mixed up some mud. Again, like I said, you never use it straight out of the box. So it's, I thinned it down somewhat. I don't need this anymore. Let's put that there. <clears throat> now, because I did this with paper tape, there is a way to coat this. There is a way to coat this. And the thing about it is, is which side was done first? Now, if this was done first, and then this was done, these, the off angles are different, they're, they're a little off, I am going to do this side first. But if this was done first, and then this was butted up to it, now I'm gonna do this side first in order to keep it straight. Now I know I did this drywall. I'm gonna mud this. And I'm gonna mud this up starting right here. I'm gonna mud this over. Do I need to stay up a line? Nah. I just gotta make sure that when I'm wiping this all out, it's nice and straight. And I can eye it. I can stand up here and eye it one, one way or the other. One way or the other. All right. That one actually caught my arm a little bit. So, you know, it's funny because when I first did this ceiling, this, this ceiling was way down here. And I built, and I built this cathedral. I put this ceiling above the other roof. So I literally built, I literally built, put a roof over the other roof and once I got it all sealed, then I tore out everything in here and, and removed everything that was in here. So this has been a work in progress for many years. And uh, so now, uh, but when I first did this, they had this new product out for off angles. It came in a, it came in a plastic, it was plastic and it came in a box and they were eight foot strips for these off angles up here. It was something new that they were trying. This was, it wasn't level, I'm sorry, it wasn't, uh, it was similar to uh, Magic Corner, similar, but it was not Magic Corner. And you stapled it in place and you mudded it up. Again, straight flex wasn't around yet. This was a brand new product. They were just trying it out, seeing, seeing if it worked. And I did this angle with that. And it did not hold up at all, obviously, because I redid it with Level Line when Level Line came out, because they'd both completely cracked out and fallen apart. So I had to come up here and redo them. And I, so I did that. And now uh, I'm just redoing this now because I got rid of the skylights. But I think it was probably one of the times when I, my skylights had failed that I had to come up here and, and patch and repair the skylights and, and do all of that. And uh, so, you know, I'm, man, this is, this is taking a lot of mud. A lot more mud than I thought it was going to. So, but I can see this. Uh, uh, 
because I've got all the patching, patch, 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 patch. It, it's not working as well as if, if, if this was just a, a straight piece. All right, so if you wanted to stop there, stop there. Don't bother getting rid of all this mud. You can scrape that off after it's dry, but I don't want to have to do that. So I'm actually going to come in here and I'm just going to pick that stuff off you know, while it's a little wet so I don't have to mess with it when it's dry. And I'm gonna let this dry fully and completely before I coat the other side. I'm not gonna coat this side, okay? I'm just gonna coat this one side. That's all I'm gonna do. But I thought, you know what, let's just take care of this and uh, get some of this stuff off of here. That looks good. Eh, a little bit, right? There, all right, I'm gonna leave the rest of that alone. Now for this, this here, uh, I saw, I didn't like that. There was some stuff there that I didn't like. Now, I'm gonna wanna use the biggest knife that is comfortable for me. Now, I've seen guys come in here and, and do this with a six. Yes, I can do this with a six. That's not a problem. That's, that's showboating though. That's just showboating. So I would probably use a 10 on some of these. And this is what I would normally just use. But for this particular video, I'm gonna pull out my 12 because again, I'm telling you, I'm gonna do this so anybody can do this. So you want the, the largest knife you can get. And then this is a 12 inch knife. It fits my 14 inch pan. This is a 14 inch pan. A lot of times you only have a 12 inch pan for a 12 inch knife. Now, I, I, was, I was gonna ask the question one time. So how many, time, how many people can do this with a hawk and trowel? If I'm holding a hawk and trowel, can I hold my six, my eight, my 12, my 10? Can you hold all of those if, I had, if you had a hawk and trowel? I mean, because I can do it with my pan. I just can't do it with a hawk and trowel. But I'm gonna use a 12 inch knife then. And, and I'm gonna start right here. Because I can see that this needs some mud. I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna fill this in. Whoop. Stop whoops in here, Ray. So. Like that. And this one here, it's actually pretty, this one here is pretty level. So I am gonna do that, but uh, I don't need my, I actually don't need those two knives, so I'm gonna set them down. And this is gonna take quite a bit of mud. It really is. This is not gonna be a tight skim coat. I'm gonna be using quite a bit of mud here. So I'm gonna fill this all in, split this all out the best I can with as much mud as I get on there and, and keep it, you know, keep it as flat as you can. Don't, don't sit there and uh, and try to, uh, this is not taking mud. Gotta make sure that mud gets in there. And I'm gonna come out all the way over to here too. And then come up to that point. But you wanna keep it as flat as you can. And believe it or not, guys, I, I don't usually use a 12. I almost always just use an eight, or I'm sorry, a 10 inch knife. I don't usually use a 12. Now I'm gonna feather this whole thing out. And the reason I'm not too concerned about this seam and blowing out this seam right here and splitting this is because this is, this is high point. I can tell this is high point here. So it needs mud from here up. It does not meet, need mud down here. But so I do know that that's high point. And now I'm gonna hold my knife just nice and flat and I'm gonna to try to get it as flat as possible. Don't 
overdo this, guys. You do not have to overdo this. You can put on four coats if you have to. Just keep it flat, right? I could stop right there and walk away. I really could, and let it dry. Walk away, let it dry. I'm not going to because I'm a little heavy up here, right? So I'm gonna wipe this down, but I'm not even gonna use that. I'm gonna use my six, and I'm going to wipe this down right here, and I'm gonna take out that one lap mark right there. Now, I'm gonna walk away, let it dry. I don't care about these blow holes. Then leave them alone, let them sit. You know, if, if I really wanted to take the time and add mud and wipe this down, I can do that. But as soon as this is dry, I can fill those in, I can put a second coat on this, and I can skim this out without a problem. So walk away, let it dry. Now let's do the other one. So many people just play with it and play with it and play with it. And it's just not necessary. You know, again, we, we, got, we got time for this. I'm, I'm not getting paid for this. This is at my house and I'm, I'm not getting paid for this. So if this is at your house, you're not getting paid for it. Just, let's just take the time. Wow, this is dripping a lot. Dripping a lot more than I usually do. So just take your time, get it full. Stop dripping, stop dripping. I see this, I added, I made, I made this mud a little thicker, but it's, it's thinner at the bottom. This is much thinner at the bottom. So this, this mud is, a bit thinner than I really wanted to want to use it, but it'll work. It will work. Let's see here. I don't I don't like this. I need more mud. Right there. I really do. So I'm going to feather this edge so I get more mud here. A little bit more. And then I'll wipe it out. Feather this edge down. And again, had this, had, uh, if I wanted to finish this in a day, I could. I would have hit this a couple of times with some speed set mud. I would have hit this a couple of times with some speed set mud. I would have skimmed it out tight with topping and I would have finished this in a day. I, I got these holidays right here, but I think I got them filled in now. So now, again, I'm gonna grab my knife, keep it flat, and just work it up. Keep it flat, work it up. Oop. Let's get a little bit more there. Work it up, all right? Keep it flat, work it up. Don't worry about these lines yet. Just don't. And then work it up. Okay, now if I want to take care of these lines, I can take my six and I can just take those lines out if I want. I don't even have to do that. I could just let it dry, walk away, let it dry. You know, it's all I really needed to do. Okay, so now, now that I have that there, like this, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just let this set up, let it dry. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put a final coat on this. And then I will sand it probably tomorrow afternoon because my final coat's gonna dry very, very quickly. So stay tuned. And then I don't know how many videos this is gonna be, but stay tuned and we will, uh, we will do this tomorrow. All right, you guys. 
Have a great day. Hey, if you really like my videos, subscribe. And if you really, really like them, please just share them with somebody else. How do you like my new t-shirts? And you know, you also might want to check out these other videos that are playing right down here right now. So uh, just click on them. All right, subscribe. Have a great day.